Hey guys, it's Leah B from Prestige Veteran Medical Consulting. I am a U.S. Army veteran, physician assistant, and former compensation and pension examiner. Today, I wanted to come on and discuss jet fuel exposure and how that can be related to VA disability in some veterans. So let's remember that jet fuel exposure itself is a, it's not a disability, it's a method by which people are exposed to a contaminant and may develop a disability. Um, another example of this is acoustic noise exposure. So acoustic noise exposure, like loud boom noises in your ear, whether it's from, you know, grenades or firing at the range or whatever, that is not a disability, but the resultant tinnitus or tinnitus can be a disability. So it's important to recognize that jet fuel exposure itself is not a disability, but the resultant um, medical conditions that can develop because of it can be, right? So jet fuel exposure in general, the, there have been many types of jet fuels over the years that military members have been exposed to. Some of the most common ones are JP5, JP8, um, Jet A, and the types of people that are exposed to them, obviously we think about fuel handlers, right? People that work on the flight line, people that, um, you know, a lot of Air Force members even, um, you know, Army or any branch really that has an occupation that deals with jet fuel or fuels or works on the flight line can be exposed, but not just those guys, right? So we, there's tons of information in the news out there right now about toxic exposures to things like Camp Lejeune, right? So you can have a toxic exposure based on jet fuel spilling into the groundwater. You can swim in it. It can be Maybe you worked in logistics and you transported it, right, or packaged it up. So if you ingested it, you inhaled it, you had skin contact with it, whether it was direct contact because you worked on, worked with it every day or some accidental ingestion of it, um, you may have a disability that you have developed because of that exposure. There are super fun sites. The EPA, Envi Environmental Protection Agency, has a lot of good information on their website. And you can look at different military installations and what kind of exposures and what years some of these super fun sites have been set up for. And, and it will tell you a lot of those contaminants that people were exposed to. So again, what kind of medical conditions can be here? Um, now you can have neurologic conditions. You can have, there is research to state that Parkinson's disease can be linked in some instances. You can have respiratory conditions. Um, if you've inhaled it, you can have liver conditions. You can have gastrointestinal condi conditions if you've ingested it. There may be some cancers, renal cancers, if you've drank it, right? And it's gone through your urologic system. So there are a whole bunch of different ways that a person can be exposed and different variables, the length of time they were exposed, how much they drank or how much they handled can be a factor in developing those conditions. And you also have to have your doctor and you have to have a frank conversation with them about your other risk factors, right? So if you've got renal cancer, you know, is it most likely because you handled jet fuel once or twice back in the 70s? Or is it because you've smoked two packs of cigarettes a day for the past 30 years, right? So you have to look at those things because it's not just an automatic thing. You have to look at it um, and really analyze those things. So how can a person be rated for VA disability for exposure to jet fuel? So again, we've already discussed that a person has to have a current medical condition, most likely related to that jet fuel exposure or something else. So you've got to have that in-service incident, you've got to have a current medical condition and a link between the two or a nexus, right? So I have a few articles that I'd like to go over for you guys and you guys can take a look, look them up and discuss them with your treating provider. And maybe they may help you, especially with those neurologic conditions. Oh, again, before I forget, also Vietnam era veterans, there is a lot of research out there that supports that Agent Orange was mixed in some cases in some batches with jet fuel as well. So that's another factor, right? So a couple articles you guys can look up from the Scandinavian Journal of Work and Environmental Health. One article is called Long-Term Exposure to Jet Fuel, an Investigation on Occupationally Exposed Workers with Special Reference to the Nervous System. And another article from the same periodical called Long-Term Exposure to Jet Fuel 2, a Cross-Sectional Epidemiologic Investigation on Occupationally Exposed Industrial Workers with Special Reference to the Nervous System. Those articles investigated jet fuel, those that handled jet fuel um, and the neuro neurologic and neurophysiologic health of aircraft workers exposed to them. Um, 
There's another article, another study called Profile of Patients with Chemical Injury and Sensitivity, published in Environmental Health. Um, there is a section in, in a book called Permissible Exposure Levels for Selected Military Fuel Vapors. It's chapter three, Toxicokinetics of Military Fuels. And that's a really good one that is spe uh, specific for military members, right? There's another article. I'm going to jump into this one real quick. Hydrocarbon exposure and Parkinson's disease. I don't want to get too far into the Parkinson's disease stuff because this one's more of a general overview for you guys today. But that article was published in Neurology um, in, an, in a periodical car, called Neurology. So overall, the takeaways from today is how much jet fuel were you exposed to? How what how were you exposed? Was it inhaled? Was it um, handled through skin contact? Was it ingestion? Um, was it a combination of those things? And what is your current medical condition? And do you have other risk factors um, for whatever that medical condition is? And so if the most likely cause of whatever your medical condition is, is jet fuel, you may have a claim to disability with a nexus or a link being that exposure to jet fuel and service. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Thank you for watching. Please drop some comments and please like and subscribe. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks.